So we're now at uh, T minus two hours, one minute, 15 seconds, and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control. T-minus, one hour, 50 minutes. This is the LC on countdown net one with a comm check. STC. STC, loud and clear. SMD. SMD, read you loud and clear. NSC. NSC, loud and clear. NLM. NLM, I have you loud and clear. Roger. Centaur LO2 storage tank at chill down level. Roger. Start Centaur LO2 transfer line chill down. Roger. CFA purge and displacement mode. Roger. Start Atlas LO2 vaporizer pre-chill. Roger.
This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus one hour, 46 minutes, and counting. We're about a minute away from actually starting our tanking operations. One interesting thing today is that we have three cameras on the rocket, two on the Atlas, one on the Centaur. On the Atlas, uh, one is facing down, the other is facing forward, and the one on the Centaur is going to be facing forward toward the spacecraft. So we should have uh, some very good video during during launch through, throughout the uh, flight coming to us. And we'll be putting that out for you as long as the video is usable. We're at T minus one hour, 45 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control. Tank stable, step two pressure. Roger. ECB stable, approve cell. Roger. T minus one hour, 45 minutes. RD-180 has been on heated GN2 for 20 minutes minimum. Roger. Atlas LO2 vaporizer pre-chill complete. Roger. Start Atlas LO2 tanking. Roger. Centaur LO2 trans line chill down complete. Roger. CC safing purge is active. Roger. CEP on high flow. Roger. Start Centaur LO2 tanking. Roger. T minus one hour, 43 minutes. Perform Centaur LH2 SVV cycle test. Roger.
This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus one hour, 40 minutes, and counting. Upon liftoff, tracking of the Atlas V rocket will be done by the Air Force Western Range, beginning with the antennas at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Then shortly after launch, the vehicle will also be acquired by the Santa Inez tracking station above Santa Barbara. The next station to acquire will be the Navy tracking station at San Nicolas Island, one of the Channel Islands off the coast west-southwest of Los Angeles. At that point, the Tedris West tracking and data relay satellite begins coverage. This coverage uh, will continue until acquisition by Tedris East, and between the two satellites, there will also be coverage on the ground, supported uh, by stations at Oak Hangar, England, Thule, Greenland, and Hawaii. The uh, spacecraft separation from the Atlas V will be occurring within the range of the Oak Hangar, England tracking station. Most of our communications channels here in the Mission Director Center is uh, are quite uh, quite quiet. There is are no issues in work at this time. Fueling is uh, underway, and the weather continues to be go for a 10:02 a.m. Pacific Time launch at T minus one hour 38 minutes 34 seconds and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control. Centaur LO2, 10%. Roger.
Centaur LO2 at 20%. Roger. T minus one hour thirty three minutes. This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus one hour, thirty two minutes, forty four seconds and counting. We're gonna look now at some video taken earlier this morning of the gantry being pulled away from the Atlas V rocket with the LDCM spacecraft. This was uh, something that actually began while it was still dark at Vandenberg at about 5.22 a.m. this morning. This uh, is a little bit different than uh, the way it's done at Cape Canaveral. At the Cape, uh, the, uh, the rocket comes to the pad, whereas here the rocket is already on the pad and the gantry pulls away from the Atlas V. vehicle as we see it here is 192 feet tall. Fairing on top of the rocket is 16 and a half feet in diameter. Now the entry is mostly back from the Atlas V. Which then led us right almost immediately after the entry was pulled away into our fueling operations this morning. A little bit of mist uh, this morning early, but uh, most of that has uh, gone at this point. There is a little bit of fog offshore, but for the most part we have clear skies. We're going to be looking. We're going to be looking at uh, a time lapse video of the uh, gantry rolling back here in just a moment.
So there we have a live picture once again against a beautiful clear blue sky here at Vandenberg. Our fueling operations are continuing to go well and we're at T minus one hour 29 minutes seven seconds and counting this is Atlas Launch Control. Centaur LO2, 50%. Roger. LC ECS step 1350 payload and CM have been on GN2 for 40 minutes minimum. Roger. Center LO2 at 60%. Roger. T minus one hour, 25 minutes.
Centaur LH2 SVV cycle test complete. Roger. Centaur LO2 at 70%. Roger. CFA Purge has been in displacement mode for over 25 minutes. Roger. Centaur LH2 storage tank at chill down pressure. Roger. This is Atlas Launch Control at T minus one hour, 21 minutes and 50 seconds. We're being joined now here in the Mission Director Center by Mike Miller, the Senior Vice President for Science and Environmental Programs for Orbital Sciences Corporation. Mike, uh, the, uh, the, the spacecraft that we're launching today, about when did Orbital start building this? Our uh, Gilbert division uh, near Phoenix, Arizona started this in the uh, April of 2008 time frame. So it's been uh, nearly five years we've been working on this. Well, I think uh, some, of the, some of the orbital people are, you know, have been associated with Landsat for a while, actually. Yeah, I'm actually one of those. Um, actually, early in my career, I started, uh, started off as an early engineer working on Landsat 4 and Landsat 5. And uh, I'm proud to say that one of the reasons why Landsat 5 stuck around so long was we put an extra fuel tank inside of the uh, spacecraft. Well, that was one of my first tasks uh, as an early mechanical engineer. Well, we've got some video now of some of the spacecraft processing that was going on out here at Vandenberg leading up to our launch today. So um, if you could tell us what we're seeing. Sure, I'd love to. Uh, this is actually a shot showing the shipping container as it arrived here at uh, the Astrotech facility at Vandenberg. That's the uh, hard cover being removed, and then you can see a uh, frame that's around the horizontal satellite underneath that big um, black cover, uh, covering it for uh, contamination control. It's uh, moved off to the side in preparation for a number of tests that we perform. This shows the full satellite uh, with the bus underneath. We call it the, the spacecraft bus underneath. Solar rays are shown in this view as it's being lowered onto our INT stand in preparation for some of the tests. And in particular, we're going to show some of the uh, solar array uh, early testing. Listen to this. And with this, you see uh, we've actually released four individual bolts that allow for the solar array to, uh, to come away slightly from the spacecraft, uh, verifying the operation. We then went through a number of different inspections, uh, many more than just that are shown here on this video, in preparation for, uh, for further activities. In this view here, you see the full satellite with the instruments above, and uh, was getting, being prepared there to be moved on top of the launch vehicle adapter for the Atlas. Shows a side view also. There, here it is actually with the adapter attached underneath the spacecraft as it's moved onto the payload transport dolly being bolted down here. And next you see one of the fairing halves uh, for the nose cone on top of the rocket being positioned. Uh, this is the other one with the uh, 
LDCM logo being shown prevalently. There you, there you go, again, a good shot of that. And this shows the uh, final view with the instruments on the top, the OLI and tiers, and the spacecraft bus underneath as uh, one fairing half gets put into position. And then the other one moves very carefully. You'll see some video here of how slowly and precisely it's moved into position. Then it's uh, covered underneath uh, to protect it. Uh, the entire assembly is lifted onto a uh, larger transport dolly. So the entire payload element is lifted up on top of a, uh, of a truck, effectively, and uh, it's able to be moved over to the launch pad. This shows that, uh, that move from the north base here at Vandenberg uh, to where it is today on the south base at Slick 3. Well, tell us uh, about the instruments. Who built the instruments that are actually on the satellite? Well, there are two instruments. The uh, operational land imager was developed by Ball Aerospace in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, the thermal infrared sensor was developed at Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And then uh, Orbital built the satellite where? And did you integrate the instruments at that same yes. location? Yes. Yeah, we built um, the satellite bus, or, or spacecraft as we call it, and then did all the integration of the observatory at uh, Gilbert, Arizona, our facility there, um, just outside of Phoenix. Well, Mike, thank you very much, and uh, I'm sure you'll be very interested in about, uh, I don't know, the first 10 minutes or so after <laughs> spacecraft separation today. We'll be very interested. I'll actually be listening uh, to our control center. The control center team is out at uh, Greenbelt, Maryland, where they're uh, watching all of the telemetry that they can see now. And then we'll likewise be seeing telemetry from there back here so that we can stay informed with what's going on. Mike, thanks very much. And in the countdown right now, we've got about 10% uh, liquid oxygen on the Atlas. The uh, Centaur has 90% liquid oxygen on board, and uh, the countdown continues to go smoothly. Nothing more than just routine discussion on our uh, communications channels as the launch team runs through the countdown procedure. But uh, we can see that the uh, rocket now is uh, beginning to uh, huff and puff away. So we're at T-minus 1 hour, 16 minutes, 16 seconds, and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control. Centaur LO2 at 95%, topping started. Roger. Atlas LO2 at 20%. Roger. T minus one hour, 15 minutes.
Atlas LO2 at 30%. Roger. T minus one hour and ten minutes. Elsie's Yolson, be advised the impact limit line is cleared. Roger. T-minus, one hour, eight minutes. Atlas, LO2 at 40%. Roger. We're joined now at the Public Affairs Council in the Mission Director Center by Bruce Reed. He is the Mission Manager for the 
Landsat Data Continuity Mission spacecraft for NASA's Launch Services Program. And uh, Bruce will be walking through some of the things that we've been doing to get the Atlas V and the LDCM satellite ready for our launch today. Bruce, uh, first of all, uh, tell us a little bit, are, have there been any unique requirements that we've had to do to um, prepare f for LDCM? Well, George, the uh, LDCM spacecraft is, is unique, as are all the NASA spacecraft. And um, so it's, it's always a challenge on every mission to meet that, those particular requirements. For instance, the LDCM spacecraft needs to have 60 minutes of continuous sunlight after separation. So we've designed the trajectory such that that will occur. And also they have very stringent tip-off rate requirements. So the launch vehicle will do a uh, compensation maneuver just before separation. So uh, every NASA mission is unique in its own way, and, and we work out those requirements to make sure everything is met. Well, Ruth, we have some video now. If you would tell us a little bit uh, as we go, on, go along some of the things that are happening here. So this is the Atlas V booster uh, rolling out to the pad. This is all the way back in October. And you can see the booster is pretty large. It's about 100 feet long. And it looks like they've got the front end of it attached to the 60-ton crane at the mobile service tower. And uh, we have a breakover fixture at the rear of the uh, booster to allow it to go into the vertical position. And you see a good shot there of the RD-180 engine and the twin nozzles. So the booster is positioned over the uh, fixed launch platform, and it's aligned and lowered down onto the uh, launch heads. So this is the uh, Centaur stage. You can see the RL-10 engine there built by Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne. This is a cryogenic stage, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, and it'll be hoisted atop the uh, interstage adapter, which is on the booster. So this is the fully encapsulated LDCM spacecraft. Uh, the encapsulation occurred at the Astrotech facility on Vandenberg Air Force Base. And uh, then it's set up on top of the uh, transport trailer and moved out to uh, Space Launch Complex 3. This was on January 25th. And you can see we have uh, air going into the payload fairing. This is the environmental control system to keep the uh, payload uh, cool and to meet the humidity requirements and they're going to go ahead and attach uh, the uh, encapsulated assembly and hoist it up into the tower and you saw a good shot there the LDCM logo um, and uh, the uh, black portion at the bottom of the payload fairing is the uh, isolation diaphragm which maintains those environments throughout the entire transport and hoist operation and uh, they'll go ahead and put this through some uh, doors that open and center it on top of the uh, Centaur. And then we'll lower it down carefully. And I think you'll get a good shot here of the uh, Centaur equipment module as, as it's being carefully lowered down. And then they'll go ahead and install all the bolts and ready for launch. Bruce, thanks very much. And uh, best of luck to you. And uh the uh, Goddard team, the Orbital Sciences team, and uh, the uh, entire NASA Launch Services program that's here been working on this for quite some time for today for a, uh, a launch that uh, has held the schedule here at the end pretty well. So, Bruce, thanks very much for coming by. Thank you, George.
KHVs at flight mass. Roger. Atlas LO2 at 60%. Roger. Initiate BRC ECS flow. Sure. Centaur forward adaptive purge in control mode. Roger. This is Atlas launch control at T minus one hour and counting. Right now, our Centaur engine chill down for the liquid hydrogen is underway. The liquid oxygen on the Centaur is at flight level and we're at 60% on liquid oxygen on the Atlas. At this point we continue to be on schedule for launch at 10.02 Pacific time this morning. We're not working any technical issues at this time and weather continues to be a 0% chance of violation. At T-minus, 59 minutes, 20 seconds and counting, this is Atlas Launch Control. LH2 chill down complete. Roger. Start LH2 tanking. Roger. Adjust CEM ECS temperature for TRD. Roger. Centaur helium bottles at flight mass. Roger. Joining us now here at the console in the Mission Director Center is Vernon Thorpe. He is the program manager for NASA missions, and he is uh, with the United Launch Alliance and uh, will be the uh, program manager for this upcoming launch of the um, LDCM spacecraft. Vern, uh, first of all, a, uh, an atlas out here is, is not a frequent or has not been a frequent occurrence for, for NASA. Tell us a little bit about this uh, history of this launch and how this evolved. Yeah, certainly. The, the last time that we were here launching an Atlas rocket from Vandenberg for NASA was in December of 1999, and that was the EOS Terra mission. In fact, I was here, I think, in this very room for that launch uh, as well. 
Uh, we've launched a lot of Delta IIs for NASA from Vandenberg uh, in the interim, and uh, we do fly atlases for other customers out here as well. But you're right, uh, an Atlas NASA launch is uh, kind of a rare occasion out here at Vandenberg. Well, Vern, as far as the um, Landsat Data Continuity Mission, we have a flight profile that uh, would like for you to run through for us and tell us a little bit ha what's going to happen after we get to liftoff, what's the Atlas going to be doing. So if we could go ahead and, and roll the tape. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. It'll uh, give everybody a preview of what they'll see this morning. Uh, we're going to use an Atlas V 401 configuration for this mission. So that's uh, probably our most basic configuration, no solid rocket boosters. When we lift off, those booster engines will be generating almost 900,000 pounds of thrust. And for this vehicle, the first major event we see after liftoff will occur about four minutes into flight. At that point, we will have used up all the propellants in that booster stage and will issue the command to shut down the booster engine. You'll see that here in just a moment. After we shut that booster engine down, what we call booster engine cutoff, we will separate the booster stage from the Centaur upper stage about six seconds later, and we'll begin preparing the Centaur engines for the first of three burns for this mission. We're going to do two burns for the satellite and then a third burn to dispose of the upper stage. This first Centaur burn will last about 11 minutes, and eight seconds into that burn, as you saw right there, will jettison the payload fairing. This first eight minute burn, or I'm sorry, 11 minute burn will place the combined Centaur uh, Landsat satellite into a slightly elliptical orbit. We will coast for about 55 minutes to get into position for the second burn that you see here. That second burn will last a little less than two minutes. At the end of that burn, we'll be in a circular orbit with an altitude of about 360 nautical miles. A uh, few minutes after that second burn, we'll separate the spacecraft, as you see here, and then we'll begin the, the usual series of maneuvers to get the Centaur a safe distance away from the spacecraft. And then one uh, interesting thing about this mission is we will then, once we're a safe distance away, we'll continue with a third Centaur burn, and that will place the Centaur into an Earth escape trajectory so that we never have to worry about any recontact or contamination of the LDCM spacecraft. Now, we just launched an, an atlas. Uh, is, is, is this uh, atlas identical or similar to the one that we just used for the tracking and data relay satellite? This is very similar. It's the same Atlas V 401 configuration. It, it seems like I was just sitting next to you in Florida uh, launching that one. Uh, these missions are very close together. I think the, our ability to, to maintain this kind of a launch rate, to launch two NASA missions this close together, is really a testament to the, the professionalism and the experience of, of both the ULA contractor team and the, the NASA team. It's quite an accomplishment. Well, Vern, thanks very much, and we're looking forward to uh, another uh, Atlas launch uh, very shortly. Thanks very much for coming by. My pleasure. Atlas LO2 at 80%. Roger. Pressurized ECB to flight pressure. Roger. Centaur LH2 at 10%. Roger.
This is Atlas Launch Control, and we are now exactly one hour from the launch of the Landsat Data Continuity Mission on the Atlas V rocket. All of our activities are continuing to go well. We've uh, received word that the LGC and spacecraft uh, has now been configured for liftoff for the launch. And uh, all of the uh, fueling operations are continuing to go on schedule. The uh, Centaur has about 12,500 gallons of hydrogen on it when fueling is finished, uh, liquid oxygen about 4,150 gallons, and the uh, Atlas will have about 48,860 gallons of liquid oxygen, and then there's also about 25,500 gallons of RP-1 fuel, which is a highly refined kerosene. At liftoff, our initial coverage, both uh, for video and for communications, will be coming through two tracking sites located here at Vandenberg Air Force Base, and they will uh, continue to track uh, for about the first nine minutes of flight. Also, uh, downrange a uh, tracking station at San Nicolas Island in the Pacific, uh, also still in the Channel Islands off the coast of Los Angeles will begin acquiring the uh, rocket and uh, sending data back. We have three cameras on this rocket. Uh, as we've uh, mentioned, there are two on the Atlas, one facing aft, one facing forward, and then there's also a camera on the Centaur, on the uh, front of the Centaur facing forward. At T minus 48 minutes, five seconds and counting, this is Atlas Launch Control. What, 90 percent? Roger. Centaur LH2 at 40%. Roger. Centaur LH2 at 50 percent. Roger.
T minus 45 minutes. Atlas LO2 at 97.5%, topping started. Roger. Centaur LH2 at 60%. Roger. T minus 43 minutes. Centaur LH2 at 70%. Roger. T-minus 42 minutes. Centaur LH2 at 80%. Roger. Disable LH2 storage area UV detectors. Roger. Atlas LO2 at 99.6%. Roger. LH2 storage area UV detectors are disabled. Roger. Cycle Atlas LO2 fill-in rain valve. Roger. Perform Atlas airborne LO2 vent valve functional test. Roger.
T minus 40 minutes. Start final open loop FTS test. Roger. This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus 39 minutes, 36 seconds, and counting. Today's launch is dedicated in memory of United Launch Alliance employee Frank McDermott and his 55 year aerospace career with ULA, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, and Douglas Aircraft. Frank McDermott led several successful property management organizations and was considered an icon in the field. Frank was one of the original members of the National Property Management Association and held key position as past president, national chairman, and consulting fellow. Frank's work was his passion in which he found a tremendous amount of fulfillment and he was widely recognized as a mentor in the advancement and application of property management initiatives. Frank's leadership, experience, and enthusiasm will be sorely missed. There is a dedication to Mr. McDermott on the rocket today. We're now at T minus 48 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control. T minus 37 minutes. Centaur LH2 at 97%, topping started. Roger. Perform Centaur LH2 fill and drain valve cycle test. Roger. Perform Centaur LO2 fill and drain valve cycle test. Roger. Atlas Pneumatics LC. Go ahead. Status of step 1530. I called that in earlier. ECB's at flight pressure. Roger. This time all steps are complete through step 1560.
Centaur LH2 fill and drown, drain valve cycle test complete. Roger. Centaur LH2 fill and drain valve cycle test complete. Roger. Perform Centaur SRV and LH2 SVV cycling tests. Roger. Centaur SRV and LH2 SVV cycle test complete. Roger. Resume Centaur LH2 topping to flight level. Roger. Resume Centaur LO2 topping to flight level. Roger. T minus 32 minutes. Atlas LO2 fill and drain valve cycle test complete. Roger. Atlas LO2 airborne vent valve functional test complete. Roger. Perform POGO suppressor charge. Roger. T minus 30 minutes. 
secure onboard video power. Roger. LC Felix. Go ahead. Step 1790, Centaur LH2 is at flight level. Roger. This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus 27 minutes and counting. We're nearing the completion of our fueling activities for the Atlas V rocket. In just a few minutes, we will be having a weather briefing, our final weather briefing for the launch today. We've been listening to our launch conductor from United Launch Alliance, Larry Crass, leading the launch team through the countdown procedure. And our NASA launch team has been uh, monitoring the uh, engineering channels and the spacecraft channels for the status and readiness to launch, which they will be reporting on shortly. The uh, spacecraft uh, has been configured for launch and is working no issues. So at this time, we're still on schedule for a 10.02 a.m. launch this morning. At T minus 26 minutes, 6 seconds and counting, this is Atlas Launch Control. Pogo suppressor charge complete. Roger. T-minus, 25 minutes.
This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus 21 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. Coming up in about another minute and a half, we will have our final weather briefing from First Lieutenant Jennifer Kelly from the uh, Air Force here at uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base in the uh, weather office. And uh, that uh, will give you our final weather briefing for the countdown. Our tanking operations largely complete at this point. Next major activity will be placing the spacecraft on in terminal tower just before we go into the terminal countdown sequence at T minus 4. We do have a 10 minute built in hold remaining at T minus 4 minutes. At T minus 20 minutes, 25 seconds and counting, this is Atlas Launch Control. Conduct a weather briefing on Channel 8 Weather Conference Net and verify weather restrictions and vehicle exposure for TRD. Roger. T minus 20 minutes. Perform BRCU, SIB 1, and SIB 2. Stand by for the weather briefing. Roger. All stations acknowledge. Elwell. Elwell. Atlas RC. RC. LD. LD. LV1. LV1. AFLD. AFLD. ALC. ALC. NLM. NLM. OD. OD. LDA. LDA. L will provide latest T0 status for safety and launch agency constraints with probabilities of violation. This is the LO. Currently we are green. The overall probability of violation for T0 through end of window is 0% with no areas for concern. POV for 24-hour scrub is 0% with no areas for concern. This concludes my brief. LD, please provide LLPS waiver decision on channels 3 and 5. T minus 19. Perform RD 180 transducer converter calibration. Roger. T minus 18. RD 180 transducer converter calibration is complete. Roger. T minus 17. Engine FIV is closed. Roger.
LCR FTS on that one. Go ahead. FTS open loop test is complete. Roger. T minus 16. Initiate fuel fill sequence. Roger. This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus 15 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. Once the Atlas V ignites, that will occur at T minus 2.7 seconds. The actual liftoff from the stand at Space Launch Complex 3 will occur at 1.1 seconds. Then the pitch and roll program begins 17.6 seconds into the flight, and then the vehicle will go through the area of maximum dynamic pressure at 1 minute 27 seconds. We'll go into a coast phase after the Atlas has burned and then the Centaur has done its first burn. After 15 minutes and 24 seconds of flight, the coast duration is about 29 minutes and 56 seconds. And at that point, it will be an orbit of 90.1 by 373.6 nautical miles. And then the Centaur will restart for a second burn at 1 hour and 10 minutes, 34 seconds into flight. And that burn is very short, only 2 minutes and 13 seconds. And then the LDCM spacecraft will separate from the rocket at 1 hour, 18 minutes, 20 seconds. The initial orbit will be 365.5 by 356.2 nautical miles and then will become fully circular in a 438 mile high orbit at an inclination of 98.2 degrees. And as we mentioned, we will have various live shots of the rocket as liftoff occurs from around Vandenberg Air Force Base and we will mix those with the onboard rocket video cameras that we will be receiving back here at the Mission Director Center so that uh, we should have quite a uh, spectacular launch sequence for LDCM coupled with a beautiful clear sky. At T minus 13 minutes 28 seconds and counting, this is Atlas Launch Control. Primary adjust file has been loaded into the FTINU and verified. TechX file adjust underscore AV035 underscore 05 with SDLCRC of Alpha 379. Roger. Center LO2 at flight level. Roger. T minus 12 minutes.
T minus eleven minutes. team has eight minutes. Switch all secondary decoms to RF link. Roger. This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus 7 minutes, 13 seconds, and counting. In just a few minutes, we'll be going into our final built in hold at T minus 4 minutes. That is a 10 minute hold, and that's when the final pulls will be done to proceed toward an on time launch at 10.02 and to pick up the count at T minus 4 minutes. During that time, the LDCM spacecraft will be going to internal power. And there'll be a poll of both the United Launch Alliance teams and the NASA teams for readiness to proceed with the countdown toward the 10.02 liftoff. At this time, we're not working any issues in the count going into that hold, and we still expect an on-time launch at 10.02 a.m. At T-minus 6 minutes, 13 seconds in counting, this is Atlas Launch Control. T minus six minutes. 
fuel cell sequence is complete. Roger. T minus five twenty. T minus five minutes. Start radas data acquisition. Roger. Atlas LO two at flight level. Roger. Verify solar radiation acceptable for launch. Solar radiation is acceptable. All steps are complete prior to going into the T minus four minute hold. T minus four minutes in holding. This is a programmed 10 minute hold. All communications switch to channel one. All personnel and visitors remain in present position until launch. Maintain operational silence in the LCC. LC switch to ready position. DTP status verified. Roger. Verify hold fire switch is in the proceed position. Ready to proceed. Red line monitor and the event table are in the correct configuration for terminal count. Roger. Apply onboard video power. Roger. Perform launch on time verification. In work. SSCE go. SMA. SMA is go. SMD. SMD is go. NASA MIM. NASA MIM go. NAM. NAM is ready. Copy that. The NASA team is re ready to release the hold at T minus four minutes. Launch on time verified. I and Q channel links from range verified. Roger.
This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus four minutes and holding. In just a moment, we'll hear Larry Crass, the launch conductor, come up and conduct his uh, final poll of the launch team. There's also just uh, been direction given to transfer the LDCM spacecraft to internal power. At T minus four minutes and holding, this is Atlas Launch Control. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems. Propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems. Propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. LH2. Go. Asgas. Go. Electrical systems. Airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facilities. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. Instrumentation. Go. Com. Go. Timer. Go. GC cubes. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Red line monitor. Go. Quality. Go. OSM. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Range weather and clear to proceed. Go. Launch director. LC, this is LD. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with count. T0 is planned for 18 colon 02 Zulu. Set count to start at 17 colon 58 Zulu. Roger. T0 is set for 1802 Zulu. Count will start at 1758 Zulu. TCM is on internal power and ready for launch. This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus four minutes and holding. We have confirmation now that LDCM is on internal power. About 90 seconds from picking up the count. Thirty seconds from picking up the count. Picking On up my in mark, ten seconds. Will be T minus four minutes and counting. 
three, two, one, mark. Three fifty five. Ground power is enabled. We're in the terminal countdown sequence now. Three minutes. Securing Atlas LO2. Atlas tanks to flight pressure. 250. FPS internal. One fifty nine. Vehicle internal. One fifty five. Launch sequence their start. One fifty. Securing Centaur LH two. Securing Centaur LO two. One forty. Launch enable. One thirty seven. FDS armed. One twenty. That's the count start. Workers arm. One ten. Ten fouls locked. One minute. Rock report range status. Range is green. Stable at step three. Forty seconds. Twenty eight. Twenty five. Status check. Go, Alice. Go, Centaur. Go LDCM. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Have ignition and lift off of the Atlas V rocket on the Landsat Data Continuity Mission continuing the 40-year legacy of preserving Earth's natural resources from space.
Closed loop control. Next duration is being controlled as expected. Engine continues to operate normally, seeing minor changes in the change in mixture ratio, as expected. Vehicle rates look good. Engine is burning normally. And LDCM is now supersonic. Coming up on max Q. And we've now passed through the region of max dynamic pressure. And the engine is throttled down to 95% thrust as expected. Everything is looking good. And the vehicle is now 13 miles in altitude, 6 miles downrange, traveling at 1,700 miles per hour. Still operating normally at 95% thrust. Everything looking good. And we've vented the center of fuel tank for, to condition the propellants for center phase. Booster continues to operate normally. Good steady state thrust. Next event we're looking for is firing the pyro valve to activate the center reaction control system. And we fired that valve. Loop pressure coming up, everything looking good. And engines operating normally. Vehicles accelerating smoothly. 3.3 G's. And everything looking good. Very small disturbances in the flight control system. Being a very smooth ride. Continuing at 95% thrust. Very little control activity on Atlas PU. And the vehicle is now 25% of liftoff weight. And we've now started our constant 5G acceleration phase. And we fire the pogo bleed valve. And you start a boost phase chill. Everything's reacting. We're now at 4.6 G limiting. You use open loop. Coming up on booster engine cutoff. We have BECO. We have staging. Ignition. Full thrust. Everything is looking good. Good steady state operating levels on center coming up on fairing set. And we have fairing separation. Two good brake wires. And we re enable guidance. The vehicle is now steering. Thing look at start transient. Very good start transient. And we've gone to our Z profile valve angle on Centaur PU. Went down to the lock stop. Everything is looking good. We've seen the reaction control systems firing to purge the GN2 out, as well as thermal conditioning firings for the loop. And I think very good steady state operating levels for the Centaur main engine. Vehicle is flying very smooth. We're now 137 miles in altitude, 428 miles downrange, traveling at 10,400 miles per hour. Everything is looking good. And 
has gone to close loop control and center PU, continuing to make a locks correction as expected. Parallel 10 continues to operate normally. Coming up on our telemetry format change, you're going to see very good telemetry data. Center of PU is now beginning to control. Valve has come off to the lock stop. And we've had the telemetry format change. Very small dropout. Centaur continues to operate normally. We're continuing to see the pre-planned firings of the reaction control system to condition the loop and thrusters, as well as very little roll control being required. Everything looks good. And we have made the roll to Tedris. And we have a preliminary look at booster stage performance. We are plus 71 pounds of PE, but uh, represents a 0 0.71 sigma case. Very good performance from the booster. RL-10 continues to operate normally. PU is now controlling near nominal mixture ratio. Engine operating parameters look good. Continue to control as expected. See the engine responding to the changes in mixture ratio. And our reaction control system temperatures have reached a steady state with bottle temperature. Vehicles uh, continue to accelerate very smoothly. Very little dynamic response from the flight control system. PU is nominal. We're now 197 miles in altitude, 970 miles downrange, traveling at 11,800 miles per hour. And a quick look at our trajectory performance. We are flying right down our predicted trajectory. Everything's looking good. And we have safety FTS system. And vehicles now maneuvering for RAN steering as expected. The appropriate response and body rates. Since our main engine is operating normally. And we are in the process of executing a little over 11 minute first burn for everything is normal on the mission. We use controlling right at our nominal MR. And vehicle rates have stabilized out, continuing to accelerate smoothly. Two hundred miles in altitude, twelve hundred eighty three miles downrange, traveling at twelve thousand eight hundred miles per hour.
and everything continues to operate normally. We are now 194 miles in altitude, 1,480 miles downrange, traveling at 13,500 miles per hour. Continue to see good Centaur operating parameters. And PU is controlling nicely. Your periodic firings in the reaction control system as expected. Turbin inlet temp, right where we expect it to be. Everything is nominal. About 12 minutes into the mission, everything looking good. 185 miles in altitude, 1,680 miles downrange, traveling at 14,200 miles per hour. Engines operating normally. Everything looking good. And PU control has been very stable near nominal mixture ratio. Very good engine operating parameters. Hydrazine system performance has been excellent thus far. We continue to receive very good telemetry data. We're now two minutes from a nominal MECO. Engine continues to operate normally. Quick look at other vehicle parameters. Tank, propellant tank and bottle pressures look good. As do battery voltages. Vehicle rates are normal. Everything continues to look good. Chamber pressure, lock pump discharge, and battery inlet pressure are right as expected. Active PU control looks good. One minute to a nominal MECO. Thirty seconds to nominal Miko, everything looks good. And PU has gone open loop. Coming up on Miko. Cut off. Center main engine is shut down. Shutdown signatures are normal. 4S engines are on. And the vehicle is maneuvering to its PTC attitude. And we are starting our spin up and roll. We've completed that. We're now maintaining a 
one degree per second PTC roll, continuing to see normal settling. This will be a 55 minute coast for our second burn. And we can even see our expected maneuvering of the vehicle for coast phase. Taking a quick look at bus and battery voltages looking good. Here's our storage bottle pressures and tank pressures. And we've just passed through 18 minutes into the mission, everything looking good. We are coasting following a very good first burn of Centaur. And continuing to see expected maneuvering for coast phase. Bus battery voltages look good. Tank and bottle pressures look good. And for an official liftoff time, we have 10.02.00 decibel 536. 10.02.00 decibel 536 was our official liftoff time for the Atlas V with LDCM. In just a moment, we'll be doing launch replays from different camera sites around Vandenberg. Passing through 20 minutes into the mission, everything continues to look good. Seeing expected data dropouts due to the PTC roll as expected. Vehicle systems and they look nice and stable. Pitch and yaw have nulled out. And we continue to see our one degree per second PTC roll. And we have switched off C-band transponder right on time. We are also changing our duty cycle on the reaction control system. That switched in uh, a little while back. We are ramping down to a 12.5% duty cycle.
and we do have our first look at our Mika 1 orbit. We are within one sigma in our orbital parameters. Everything is looking good. Passing through 24 minutes into the mission, everything continues to look good. Tank pressures, bottle pressures are normal. We're down to our 12% duty cycle on settling motors. Bus battery voltages look good. Nice 30 volt supply. And pitch and yaw are sitting right at zero, and we see our PTC roll. Everything looks good. This is Atlas Launch Control. We're looking now at a view of the Earth that shows the ground track of the Atlas V rocket with LTCM. As we can see, it's moved considerably south over the Pacific Ocean. And we can see with this uh, image that uh, it shows where the daylight area is, and uh, off to the right is the area of the Earth that's in darkness. And uh, later, the spacecraft will be following in this track, but we'll be coming back northward, and we'll be entering that uh, area of darkness that we see, coming back over the North Pole, and then down over the Pacific again, back into daylight. And you can see where the rocket is with the flashing green icon.
Bottle pressure looks good. Tank pressure is good. And electrical system is no change, operating normally. We're going to look now at some launch replays, video launch replays from different camera positions at the Pan and around Vandenberg. And we've passed through 30 minutes into the mission. No change in status. All systems looking good. And the vehicle is in the process of a PTC roll reversal. We are heading down to a minus one degree per second roll. This time we are experiencing a telemetry dropout. Oh, there's back. And roll rate has steadied out at minus one degree per second. All other systems look normal.
passing through 34 minutes into the mission. No change in status, everything looks good. Plus battery voltages right where they're supposed to be, as are tank and helium bottle pressures. Vehicle rates are nice and smooth.
We're back now in the coast phase, and as you can see, the spacecraft is uh, down near Antarctica. We're 39 minutes, 47 seconds into the mission, and we will be going away for a short time, coming back again at 11.05 Pacific for the restart of the Centaur stage, that uh, brief two minute or so burn that uh, will lead us to spacecraft separation. So at this time, we will take a pause in our coverage and come back at 11.05 Pacific time to resume coverage of the launch of Landsat Data Continuity Mission. This is Atlas Launch Control. As the most forward deployed citizens of the planet at this moment, we, the first expedition crew aboard Space Station Alpha, Centaur LO2 at 20%. Roger. T minus one hour thirty three minutes.
This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus one hour, 32 minutes, 44 seconds, and counting. We're going to look now at some video taken earlier this morning of the gantry being pulled away from the Atlas V rocket with the LDCM spacecraft. This was uh, something that actually began while it was still dark at Vandenberg at about 5.22 a.m. this morning. This uh, is a little bit different than uh, the way it's done at Cape Canaveral. At the Cape, uh, the, uh, the rocket comes to the pad, whereas here the rocket is already on the pad and the gantry pulls away from the Atlas V. vehicle as we see it here is 192 feet tall. Fairing on top of the rocket is 16 and a half feet in diameter. Now the entry is mostly back from the Atlas V. This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus one hour, 46 minutes and counting. We're about a minute away from actually starting our tanking operations. One interesting thing today is that we have three cameras on the rocket, two on the Atlas, one on the Centaur. On the Atlas, uh, one is facing down, the other is facing forward, and the one on the Centaur is going to be facing forward toward the spacecraft. So we should have uh, some very good video during during launch through, throughout the uh, flight coming to us, and we'll be putting that out for you as long as the video is usable. We're at T minus one hour, 45 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control. Tank stable, step two pressure. Roger. ECB stable, a pre-fill. Roger. T minus one hour, 45 minutes. RD-180 has been on heated GN2 for 20 minutes minimum. Roger. Atlas LO2 vaporizer pre-chill complete. Roger. 
Start Atlas LO2 tanking. Roger. Centaur LO2 transfer line chill down complete. Roger. CC safing purge is active. Roger. CEP on high flow. Roger. Start Centaur LO2 tanking. Roger. T minus one hour, 43 minutes. Perform Centaur LH2 SVV cycle test. Roger. which then led us right almost immediately after the gantry was pulled away into our fueling operations this morning. A little bit of mist uh, this morning early, but uh, most of that has uh, gone at this point. There is a little bit of fog offshore. But for the most part, we have clear skies. We're going to be looking. We're going to be looking at uh, a time lapse video of the uh, gantry rolling back here in just a moment. So there we have a live picture once again against a beautiful clear blue sky here at Vandenberg. Our fueling operations are continuing to go well. And we're at T minus one hour, 29 minutes, seven seconds and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control.
Centaur LO2 50%. Roger. LC ECS step 1350 payload and CM have been on GN2 for 40 minutes minimum. Roger. So we're now at uh, T minus two hours, one minute, 15 seconds, and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control. T minus one hour, 50 minutes. This is the LC on countdown net one with a comm check. STC. STC loud and clear. SMD. SMD read you loud and clear. NSC. NSC loud and clear. NLM. NLM, I have you loud and clear. Roger. Centaur LO2 storage tank at chill down level. Roger. Start Centaur LO2 transfer line chill down. Roger. CFA purge and displacement mode. Roger. Start Atlas LO2 vaporizer pre-chill. Roger.
This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus one hour, 40 minutes, and counting. Upon liftoff, tracking of the Atlas V rocket will be done by the Air Force Western Range, beginning with the antennas at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Then shortly after launch, the vehicle will also be acquired by the Santa Inez tracking station above Santa Barbara. The next station to acquire will be the Navy tracking station at San Nicolas Island, one of the Channel Islands off the coast west-southwest of Los Angeles. At that point, the Tigris West tracking and data relay satellite begins coverage. This coverage uh, will continue until acquisition by Tigris East, and between the two satellites, there will also be coverage on the ground, supported uh, by stations at Oak Hangar, England, Thule, Greenland, and Hawaii. The uh, spacecraft separation from the Atlas V will be occurring within the range of the Oak Hangar England tracking station. Most of our communications channels here in the Mission Director Center is uh, are quite uh, quite quiet. There is are no issues in work at this time. Fueling is uh, underway, and the weather continues to be go for a 10:02 a.m. Pacific Time launch. At T minus one hour, 38 minutes, 34 seconds, and counting, this is Atlas Launch Control. Center LO2, 10%. Roger.